Super Squad D Live Giveaway Show Starring Tyler Bloud Joseph Craven And tonight's guest star Bollywood Superstar Amitabh Bachchan That's Hugh Laurie. And that's Wade Wilson. And this is Super Squad D. Where the D, of course, stands for Deluge. Hey, welcome to the live show. It is a pleasure so to, be good back to be back on the air I'm with so you. I'm so glad. Yeah, uh, this time last week I was, of course, stranded and miserable in a uh, nice, comfortable hotel room in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, that sounds horrible. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Absolutely that terrible. That is terrible. terrible. How did you endure such atrocities? Um, I don't know, but I'm going to write a book about it, I guess. As well really, you should, yeah. sir. All right, this is Super Squad D. Our sponsor tonight is Singular Wireless. Yes. Wait, no. Really? That can't be right. Yeah, Singular Wireless, raising the bar. I don't know. That, there's no That's way. That's what it says right there. Look, the producer's she's <laughs> pointing at the cue card. There's the no cue card. card, and there's Singular no producer. There's wireless. No... <laughs> sure, sure. Whatever. Well, tonight we've got a really fun show for you, but first we have to mention that we are 30 seconds ahead. we got right. a delay here of about 30 seconds, so if you type something in the chat, tap, 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 we will see it, but it'll be 30 seconds later. Yep. Which I hope you don't have an issue with. I mean, if you do, there's nothing we can really do to <laughs> fix that, so it's about totally it. fine. Yep. All right, so, Tyler, we started up this channel for a particular yeah. purpose. Yes, and that particular purpose was to give stuff away. It really was. We do not, would you like to explain, since it's been a few weeks, why yeah, it is that we give sure, stuff away? Sure, I'd love to. Okay. Well, we just feel like we've both been blessed with so much that we want to pour back into you guys and pour back into people who may not be as fortunate. And so we just want to give stuff away. And what's been incredible about this experience is we have given stuff away of our own, but also people have sent us stuff yep. to give away. And so a lot of what we give away on this channel, which we try to do a giveaway, at least one giveaway a week. Yeah, most of the time it's it's a couple of different giveaways. That's so. right. And what we try to give away is not just physical gifts, because that is what we want to do. We want to give you guys stuff that we enjoy and we find interesting and that people donate. But we want to give away a spirit of generosity. We yeah. want to hopefully encourage you guys to go out and to do something nice for someone, to, to give a random act of kindness. Yeah. As you go throughout your week, to think outside of yourselves a little bit. So, yeah. in that spirit, yep, I wanted to show we have had a collaboration going on. Yeah, we started that up a few weeks ago with our buddy over at uh, Hardcover Reviews. Yeah, if you haven't checked out his channel, definitely go check him out. Hardcover Reviews. Uh, we're both subscribed to him. We love his channel. He does a lot of great reviews and puts out great content. And he's just a cool guy. Like, yeah, we had really a blast. We, yeah. did, we recorded a video with him a few weeks ago in which yeah. we kind of did a little debate or something. And it was hilarious. And we had such a good time with it. Uh, yeah. So go check him out, of course. Um, in that giveaway, we were giving... You could comment on the videos to enter and to get The Goon. The Goon! And it's about time that we announced who was going to win. That's so that's it. We're going to announce that... A little bit later on in the show. That's right. So, so if you entered into this mm -hmm. competition, which as all of our competitions, all you got to do is comment. And if you commented on his video and our video, you were entered into a chance to win this. So uh, stay tuned. If yep. you did that, you might be the winner. You might be a winner. It could be you. We're also going to have another giveaway tonight. And we're going to send right. out a giveaway link. As Tyler pulls up that book, I see a lot of you are already jumping into the, into the live chat. We're uh, going to be giving away the first two arcs of Uncanny Avengers tonight, along with a mystery action figure. There will be a mystery figure thrown in to this box. That's right. Isn't that exciting? We see a few of you already in here. Um, we have uh, The first one to comment was Raygon XC, who says, hello from the past, which is wow. pretty great. Cons that's incredible. Considering the delay. That that's, is that's incredible. Good. What's that's the good. past like? Um, it's a little bit bleaker than, than things are right now. Yeah, don't worry. Ahead. Raygon, Rayjon, don't worry, man. The future gets better. It's a lot better. Yeah, it does. But good to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Comment. Tell us where you're watching from. That's right. Uh, especially if you're a first-time commenter, because we're really thrilled to have you yeah, um, here. For sure. Yep. I want to point out that uh, Tyler Holland was one of our previous winners. That's true. And he used a gift card to get the first two volumes of the Dragon Ball Z manga. No, the final oh, two Oh, the final volumes. two. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. 
Huge faux pas. For <laughs> shame. But uh, congrats to him. Yeah, I was glad to see that money going to good use. Oh, yeah, and that's great use. I'm a huge DBZ <laughs> Yeah, fan, we love so. DBZ here. <laughs> Good job. That's well, it. Well done, Tyler. I'm, well done, I sir. Applaud you. We like I applaud you. you. Yeah, so let us know where you're coming from. We, we would love to know where you're commenting from, where you live. Addresses, personal information, yep. <laughs> all of that. Just just throw it in there. It'll be really so, worthwhile. Little, it's good to put those things on the internet. A little bit more than I wanted to say. Okay, okay that's right. right. Uh, it's good to see you. We're going to go ahead and introduce while you guys are announcing where you're from. We Pennsylvania. see Jim from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yep. Mm-hmm. Harrisburg, PA. Uh, as we do that, we're going to introduce what we're talking about tonight. You probably yeah. saw the title of the video. You saw the yep. episode title. Yeah. And we're talking about actors playing the same role, different actors playing the same role in different movies and who we think did it best. And yeah. This is not an uncommon thing in Hollywood. No. I mean, actors get replaced all the time. All the time, or yeah. new movies are made based on the same characters. I mean, yeah. just look at James Bond, for example. Of course, yeah. it's, the, it's the biggest one you can think of. But yeah, Sean um, Connery's the best, obviously. I mean, unless you want to make a case for Roger Moore. But why would you? If you're one of those people. <laughs> if you're one of those people. Nah, you're one of those. But uh, at the same time, there's been a lot of Robin Hood movies yeah. made, you know, so it's like, who was the best? You know, was it. Kevin Costner yeah, was obviously. it? Um, no, Carrie. What? Was. Oh yeah, you're right. I stand <laughs> Robin, corrected. My Robin bad. Minutes my guys, my bad. Um, and then of course there was whatever it was that Russell Crowe produced. Yeah, we don't talk about that. And whatever that. I mean, it made his Les Mis performance look solid. It really did. Shout out to all my Les, Les Mis bros out there in the audience. Unbelievable. Yeah. Also, right now there's a lot of controversy surrounding uh, who's going to take over the role of Wolverine. Right. So we may be having a discussion about who played it best here in a few years. Yep. The answer will be Hugh Jackman. I mean, I can already tell you. Like, it doesn't matter who they get. The answer will be Hugh Jackman. Just wait. They're going to make the announcement, and all of us are going to go, "Oh, it's so perfect." Yeah. Oh. No, that's not happening. But, so we're seeing some of uh, some names that we see a whole lot of. Yeah. Um, Houston, so it's good Texas. To see some of you guys again. Yeah, we got G Rider from Houston, Texas. I can dig it. We've got our buddy Oscar from Chile. Good, always yeah. good to see you, Oscar. We like. Um, that. We got Jeff Smith from Houston, Texas. A lot of Houston. That's it. Attack on uh, Louis. Yeah. Louis? yeah. From who just says good old Texas. I guess good, good old's old. the name of the city. Well, I've been to old Texas. I've never been to good old Texas, but I've been to old Texas. It's a fun this- time. Why do I do this? I don't know. Why do I? Why do, do you this subject show? yourself to doing this show with me? It's really sad. It is great it's to, really to see all you guys. That uh, we want yeah, to hear we missed all of you. you. Yeah, we did. I really Man, did. I, was, I really missed. Making it was this show really boring on Tuesday side, nights when 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 he wasn't here. Yeah. I just sat in front of a camera, but the problem was I couldn't figure out how to live stream. So I just yeah. sat here talking for like an hour, but no one saw it. I taught him how to do it, and he just did not listen. So anyway. Good to see everyone. Keep the comments rolling in as we get into this discussion because we want to hear That's some it. of your some of your feedback as well. Now, those we mentioned James Bond, Robin Hood. Those are just examples. Yep. Obviously, with us here on Super Squad D, yep. um, and with you guys watching, a lot more interested in superhero films in particular. And there's yeah. obviously tons of debate about who played which superhero yeah. or and, who played the superhero better. And when, when we looked at this list, there really was way too many characters to debate about than we could cover in like three episodes. So we narrowed it down to arguably the biggest three superheroes of all time. I would say arguably these are the three biggest superheroes of all time. Yeah, especially in terms of um, sheer popularity, but in terms of genre definition. And longevity, like from all the way back till now. I mean, there's an argument to be made for Iron Man and stuff like that. Before we go any further, though, I do want to point out that Jeff Smith, who's from Houston, Mm -hmm. this is his first time watching live. All right, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Shout out to Jeff. That's it. Yep. So yeah, the big three that we're talking about, longevity, Mm -hmm. popularity, Mm -hmm. and the impact they've had on superheroes as a whole. Yeah. So we're going to start the discussion... With Superman. Superman. Because really, Superman started... I mean, he didn't start at all, but he had a great deal of influence in the superhero genre. And the superhero movies really changed the the cinematic landscape. He was the first... You know, superhero movie, really. You go back to those Christopher yeah. Reeves films. I mean, the first big ones that were like the big serious and realistic yeah, and exactly. blockbuster, and Christopher Reeves was Superman. You had the old, um, you had the old uh, serial f- films made, you know, and TV and everything years and years and years yep. ago. But when you think about the modern day blockbuster film, when that was really mm-hmm. going on, you had Christopher Reeves Superman. <laughs> 
uh, was really the first superhero I could think of. Someone can, yeah. can prove me wrong and, here. And we we thought about talking about Christopher Reeves, but really he's just so iconic and he's such a good Superman that we felt like there wasn't even really a debate there. So who we're going to talk about in Superman? I never agreed to two. this, by it's the way. True. This is his idea. The most recent two Supermen, yep. which are, of course, Henry Cavill mm-hmm. from 2013's Man of Steel and most recently Batman vs. Superman, yep. and Brendan Routh from 2006's Superman Returns. Yep. Now, something we do need to say real quick, yeah. because I notice uh, some people are already pointing out... Um, you know, putting out some other names there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're trying to stick with movies in particular, so we're not bringing in Tom Willing, who is obviously bill. the best out of all of them. So who, you know that's who, fine. He did a great Tom Willing. I don't awesome. know, man, because my vote would be on Dean Cain. <laughs> New Adventures. Oh, uh, dude, Wilson. that's true. That's I don't know, man. Tom Willing, Dean Cain. <laughs> Dean it's tough. Kane. Dean Cain is pretty much a baller. Dean Cain. Okay, so you know, all right. First of all, let me say this about Superman Returns. Okay, it was a widely disliked movie. Yeah. It did not have good reception, critically or from fans. Yep. And I think that's why I liked it so much. It had a little bit of what I call the Iron Fist effect, which is what I've just recently dubbed the Iron Fist effect. And I've talked about it a few times. But to those of you who don't know, what I consider the Iron Fist effect is where something has such overwhelmingly negative reviews that it makes you like it more when you watch it because you're expecting something so terrible. Now, can I ask you a question? Is I mean, this... I guess. <laughs> I mean, if it's offensive to you, I'll refrain. <laughs> okay. But is this uh, a movie that just is bad and doesn't even have... Or are you talking about the type of thing that happens with cult followings, like with The Room, for example? Okay, so this this got like really critically just bad reviews. They okay. said it was just a bad movie, and so I read those reviews, and I saw it much later than everybody else, and all my friends said, oh, so bad, you won't like it. And when I got there, I just expected it to be rock bottom, and I actually liked it. Okay. And I, I actually liked it. That kind of happened with Iron Fist. So, I don't know. I thought Brandon Routh did a pretty good job. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention also, uh, and we didn't talk about this, but it's I feel like it's super important to look at their character outside of their costume, like their secret identity and their character in costume. Sure. Because sure. really you're almost playing two different roles. Uh, all, these th- all three of the characters we're going to look at today are playing two different roles. So, in terms of like a Clark Kent... I actually thought Brennan Routh did a great job. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't I can't disagree with you too much there. Um, and one of the things that I think also goes Brandon <coughs> Routh's favor is that he kind of resembled Christopher Reeves a I mean, bit. that was certainly why he was cast, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, he honestly looked but like he did. Christopher Reeves. So that, you know, that goes a long way. But yeah. what goes against him is I'm on the opposite end. Okay. I barely remember that movie. Okay. There just wasn't a whole lot about it that stands out to you me. You didn't find it very memorable. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm not saying necessarily that Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman are more memorable. Obviously, yeah. they're fresher in my mind because they're yeah. newer movies. But there was something about the way Henry Cavill played Superman okay. that I really enjoyed. He really has, first of all, the physique is there. You know, he, Yeah, I mean, he's a big dude. He looks like he is he chiseled out of stone. Which Especially is, between Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Yes. Like, Batman v Superman dude was swole. Yep. He's, uh, I don't know why I said it like that. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I really apologize to all of our viewers. Yeah, exactly. Um, so... <laughs> you completely threw me off. Right. You know, Henry Cavill probably does CrossFit. He I just want to say, he probably. he probably does CrossFit, guys. And he probably has a bunk for sticker that says, I do CrossFit. I do CrossFit. And I'm Henry Cavill, Superman. Yeah, he's pro- if he ran a marathon, he'd have that bumper sticker, too, yeah. right above the CrossFit. Yeah. Um, but yet, you're right. Where he it takes away from is, he's not... He's kind of the generic Clark Kent. Yeah, he's just bland. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have any characteristics. But I agree, his... Which is fine, because those movies... Aren't about Clark Kent at all. No, anyway. really those movies were. are not about. And Clark that was Kent. one of my complaints with the movie, but that's that's for another exactly. video for another day. Yeah, they realized pretty quickly. You know, I yeah. as far as origin movies go, I think Man versus uh, Man versus Steel. Yeah, Man versus Steel. Man, Man, wow. Man of Steel, not Batman of Superman, <laughs> and Man versus Steel. Uh, between those, it doesn't matter what I was going to say. You yeah, go ahead. It's fine. Uh, just looking at the chat here, uh, Tyler says. Uh, Ralph had the heart and inspired hope and Cavill had the look and I think that definitely is right on the Superman aspect like I totally agree with the Superman yeah. I still would give it I still I still personally would choose Ralph for Clark Kent 
and Cavill for Superman. Okay. Even though I disliked the direction they made, they took Superman in the movies, in the newer movies, in terms of like making him dark and unsure of himself yeah. and all that. In terms of just like look and acting, I think he did do a better job as actually See, Superman. And the him being unsure of himself thing, I think worked pretty well in Man vs. Steel. That's actually what I was going to say <laughs> yeah. a second ago. Um, I liked the way that, that they handled that um, because it was it was Superman getting used to the power, Superman getting used to being Superman, yeah. um, which was pretty... I thought they did an alright job with Jeff that. Jeff Smith here yeah. says that uh, the Superman sequel will be more Clark, and I really hope so, and I think you're right. right. I think and he, you're right. He does say that Batman vs. Superman was not a sequel. It wasn't a sequel, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I get that. I get yeah, that. it definitely wasn't. Um, so, uh, let us know what you, you guys kind of have let us know. Give us more thoughts yep. on that. Here's here's an interesting tidbit of information that I have yet to share with you, but I'm really excited to. Okay. And I'm really excited to share with you guys, and I, I got some stuff here I'm going to read. But did you know that between 1987 and 2006, no Superman movies were made? Sure. Between Superman 4 and Superman Returns? Yes. But actually five Superman movies went into some form of production, but never finalized, whether it was script or even pre-production. And I did here, not know it was here's that what many. They are. Here's I what they are. I did not know it was that many. So, um, they had Superman 5, yeah. Superman Reborn, Superman Lives. <laughs> Superman Lives is the one I'm familiar with. Batman vs. Superman, All right. which we're going to talk about in half a sec, which is okay. going to be our segue. All right. And then a movie called Superman Flyby. Which was actually written by J.J. Abrams. What? And <laughs> the movie this. got the green light, but the director actually opted, instead of directing a Superman movie called Superman Flyby, written by J.J. Abrams, to direct Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Guys, we could be living in a J.J. Abrams Superman world. This was pre-2006, but I thought that was super interesting. I can't... So, I can't come out of this cocoon okay, that I'm building. Okay, wait, wait, wait. It gets better. It gets does better. Does it, though? Because... It, it really does. It gets better. So... Some people in the chat are already pointing out... Nick Cage was Nick, in those, Nick yeah. Cage and, and Superman Lives, yeah. if I remember correctly. So, so, Batman versus Superman. I just want to read you guys the script synopsis of the 2002... It would have been a 2002 movie, Batman versus Superman, before the Christian Bale Batman flicks. And this is going to segue us into talking about Batman. So, get ready. Uh, Goldman's draft of the movie was dated June 21st and introduced Bruce Wayne attempting to shake off all the demons in his life after his five-year retirement from crime fighting. Dick Grayson, Alfred Pennyworth, and Commissioner Gordon are all dead. Well, that's a darker twist. Meanwhile, Clark Kent is down on his luck and in despair after Lois Lane divorced him and left him. Clark serves as Bruce's best man at his wedding to the beautiful and lovely Elizabeth Miller. After Elizabeth is killed by the Joker on their honeymoon, Bruce is forced to don the bad suit once more, tangling a plot which involves Lex Luthor, while Clark begins a romance with Lana Lang in Smallville and tries to pull Bruce back. In return, Bruce blames Clark for her death, and the two go against once each once another. I'm not even going to read the wow. rest of the summary, but like, what a dark movie. Superman, <laughs> Lois get divorced as Clark. There was, Everyone in Batman's life dies. There was a part of that at the very beginning before it became an action movie in which I was like, this is what, Wes Anderson presents <laughs> Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Yeesh. Man. Ridiculous, right? That would be a terrible movie. But that segues us into our next superhero we're going to talk about, Batman. Yeah. Batman yeah. has been portrayed by up. a lot of people. Before we get too deep into Batman, I do want to point out that Nick Cage seems to be the overwhelming answer for who played Superman the best, even though we yeah. never saw it. So even Nick Cage, we all agree Nick Cage. Everyone Nick agrees Cage. Nick Cage. All hail In Nick that Cage. suit, with yeah. that hair. Exactly. Now, Batman has been played by a whole lot of people, dating all the way back to black and white serials, mm -hmm. where he was played by Louis G. Wilson... And Robert Lowry. And it, wow. I really want to point out real quick Louis G. Wilson, because when I was researching some of this, this cracked me up. He was the youngest person to ever play adult Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Okay. He was only 23 years old. <laughs> wow. Played, and he had dashing, handsome, good looks, right? As Bruce Wayne does in the comics. But he also was kind of pudgy. <laughs> And so if you look up pictures of that old movie, he he kind of, so, they described him as looking a little bit more like the penguin probably would in so, a Batman suit. So he didn't have like the chiseled jaw of Ben Affleck? 
He did not have the chiseled jaw of Ben Affleck. Fair enough. And the chiseled, this facial expression. This is my chiseled jaw look. It's a square. I can make my face into a complete square. It's pretty square. Um, Tyler Holland is quick to point out that clearly George Clooney is Batman. Well, so there's, there's people who think that. So sure. since then, in, in modern cinema, obviously yeah. you had The Keat. Yeah, who was great and is an award winner at this point yep. for basically Batman, Birdman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Similar. Basically. Uh, <laughs> Val Kilmer, George yeah. Clooney, yeah. Christian Bale, and now Ben Affleck. And we're going to talk about Christian Bale from his 2005 Batman Begins movie and onwards through his 2012 Once again, finale. this is not something that I agreed to because I wanted to talk in detail about how much I love Michael Keaton. Yeah, it's true. And Ben Affleck who doesn't have his own solo Batman movie, but we're going to go ahead and give this one to him Mm -hmm. because it was enough about his character to consider it a movie that we could base our our feelings on. And that was 2016's Batman vs. Superman. Once again, we're not going with... uh, We're not going along with Adam West. You know, the TV show is is classic. It's iconic. We're not going with that. Or whatever the kid's name is in Gotham. Who watches Um, that show? Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I tried... I was thinking about writing his name down on this list. Didn't. Not even worth it. And we're not going to bring up the clearly the best Batman of them all, Kevin Conroy. Right. Well, because the debate would be over like instantly. It'd be like, oh, it's Kevin Conroy. Yeah, exactly. There's not a lot of people that argue with that. We're focusing on... Big screen live action movies. Yep, definitely. So, and even then, apparently not all of them. So Christian Bale. Yes. An interesting Batman. Um, I think when he first started, I don't think I, I actually read this somewhere, and I totally agreed with it. I don't think Christian Bale understood when he did the Batman voice of "Where's the girl." What that would actually be like three movies later, where he's <laughs> shouting it across a stadium. Like, I'm, I'm sure he regretted that vocal choice for Probably his Batman so. performance. Probably so. But, you know... But it's also Christian Bale, and the man was like, I'm going to go ahead and lose 700 oh, pounds totally. in order to play, you know, whatever it was. The, that you know, one the movie. The machinist, the yeah. engineer, the... Tinkerer, I mean, Bale Tinkerer actually... Taylor, when you think about the impact that the Bale movies had and Bale's performance, it really did elevate Batman to a serious level. Because up to that time, you know, it had been a jokey... Somewhat campy hero. The Batman Batman Returns were, right. you know, very weird. I mean, Tim Burton. Yeah, Tim that, Burton's you know. a strange dude. Um, Batman Forever was kind of cursed as a movie because it was yeah. supposed to be a direct sequel and then things got messed up. And so they mm-hmm. came back and made it really campy and over the top. And then Batman and Robin was just... And Batman and Robin was just... I still see you, baby. <laughs> I mean, when so, Batman and Robin, like, 30 seconds in, mm-hmm. Robin's yelling cowabunga, jumping yeah. out of a plane. But we got... One of the greatest movie songs of all time, Seal Kiss by a Rose, which we both have equal love for. Yeah, but that was Batman Forever. Oh, so I stand corrected. This guy. Wow. Don't even talk about equal stand, love. You can't even talk about the corrected. soundtrack. I stand corrected. I stand there corrected. used to be a green tower alone on the sea. Now, Jonathan Busby is quick to say that he kind of liked Val Kilmer. I, I kind of like Val Kilmer, too, and I kind of wish yeah. that he wasn't really disqualified because I would have talked about the merits of that. Yeah. But going back to, yeah, Christian Bale probably did not know what he was getting yeah. into. Um, but Ben Affleck apparently right now doesn't. <laughs> yeah. he's, doesn't. Cl- well, he's be also been having some trouble with his personal into. life. That's true. He's had that some some uh, rehab issues lately, and that's probably affected his decisions re- in the in the recent yep. news about Batman. But you know, I gotta say, for all that Bale did for Batman in terms of elevating its seriousness, and again, we're not going to talk about the script and how Batman was actually portrayed, just his performance sure. as Batman. Which I actually did think was pretty good in terms of like a voice and all of that, and the suit was pretty decent. I got to give it to my man Ben Affleck. Like I was a total hater, but I really loved the way Ben Affleck looked in Batman vs Superman. He had the build, he had a good looking suit, and he portrayed him really well. He definitely portrayed a better Bruce Wayne, I believe. Okay, I, I believe he portrayed that suave, debonair, billionaire Bruce Wayne really sure. well. And I liked his Batman performance better. I don't know. Maybe that's just I, haters gonna see, hate. And and that's see. I don't think he played a suave debonair Bruce Wayne. Okay. Because Bruce Wayne at that point in time was a little bit more like disgruntled well, out of retirement Bruce Wayne. Um, I really, I I got nothing against Batfleck. Okay. I liked what Batfleck okay. was. I liked what he did with the character. But my defense of Christian Bale is that I thought we saw pretty good. Um, because we got three movies already, so That's it could true. be different. But we got to see the range, the growth of the character of yeah. both Bruce Wayne and Batman. We got to see him um, as a rebellious young adult at the beginning of Batman Begins. Yeah, we got to see him start to like you know. 
faked the Playboy image because he thought that's what he was supposed to do, yeah. and they go too far with it. He got we got to see yeah. him try to figure out how to be Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Well, uh, really just wanted to be Batman. You know, we got to see different sides of that. Yeah. Um, and I appreciated that a lot. We've talked about before, and we've mentioned on the show, the Dark Knight trilogy is not really a comic book movie trilogy yeah. at all. It's a couple... It's, it's loosely based off of the character of Batman. Yes, and that's about it. And that's another discussion for another time. Exactly. Because we could spend all night on that. But I hear what you're saying. There's Those are good points, and, the, and, and that does have merit. Uh, looking at the chat here, it looks like it's a little split. Some people like Bale... Some people didn't like Bale. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people like like Batfleck. It'll be interesting to see. But a lot of Val Kilmer love. Yeah, that's what I'm talking Val about. Kilmer you shouldn't good. have ruled him out so I quickly. shouldn't have. I'm sorry. He, he didn't have the look, and I think it's Jeff Smith who put in the set. He didn't have the look of Bruce Wayne. No. So that worked against him. But, but he did have the acting. Like, he did a good he's job, a, I felt like. Yeah, I think, Bruce Val Wayne. Kilmer, I think Val Kilmer is he's a great actor. Man. You know, exactly. Um, and But I thought he was a great brooding Batman. He didn't have yeah. the look of Bruce Wayne, but we still got him in heartthrob era yeah. Val Kilmer. Yeah, so. thank goodness. It wouldn't work for us today. Yep. So that's interesting. That kind of seg- segues us into our third character that we're going to talk about. Uh, and again, we could spend a lot more time on those characters, but time is of the essence, my friends. Mm-hmm. I'm from the future, and I'm telling you, time is of the mm-hmm. essence. We're going to talk about the third biggest superhero. Oh, yes. My favorite superhero, mm. One Spider-Man. I oh, my bad. You're Sp- already saying his name. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So we're not going to talk about Tom Holland because he hasn't had his own solo movie. And I know that we gave it to, we talked about Ben Affleck, but he was a much more central figure in the Batman versus Superman. The movie was, it was at least half. (laughs) At least 50% about about him. And Tom Holland, while it was great, and I really liked his performance in Civil War, and I'm really excited about Homecoming, uh, we will have a caboodle. Amount mm-hmm. of comment, comment, content, <laughs> comments and contents about comment that movie content. when it comes out. But we're going to talk about 2002, Sam Raimi directed Tobey Maguire, and 2000. And, that can't be right. <laughs> I don't know when uh, the Amazing Spider-Man came out. I wrote 2016, but then I looked down and I was like, wait, that's not right. <laughs> no, no, it's really definitely not, not right. <laughs> 2012, 2013. That feels right. Of Andrew Garfield. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, Andrew Garfield. Real quick, if anyone can tell me what Sam Raimi's done recently, I'm drawing a blank on it. I know he's still been active as a director. Probably. I'm just curious. I miss him. I miss him. Yeah, this one is one that I've felt very strongly about for a while. Yeah. And actually, for much of the same reason you were talking about how much you liked uh, Brandon Ralph, mm-hmm. um, I thought that one character played one aspect of the role better and one yeah. character played a different aspect I, too, better. feel the same way. Oh, we <laughs> probably feel the exact same Opposite. about this one. Same. Oh. We, sure. Mm. Same. The main thing here is though, though, is that I really disliked Amazing Spider-Man. And see, I actually was okay with it. I mean, it had problems, but I enjoyed it. But again, another discussion yep. for another day. Yep. So, who who did you think was a better Peter Parker? A better Peter Parker out of those two was Tobey Maguire, um, for sure. He he yeah. had the uh, he had the awkwardness. Yeah. He had the. Uh, Shyness, you know, at the beginning of it, he he still had the baby face. He so is. He, so he, he was kind of really face. awkward. Thinking about some yeah. of those scenes with like him and Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane, there was exactly. some real awkwardness. That exactly. He, that he probably just was like yeah. in real life. Yeah. I don't know that he was acting. But. Yeah. And Tobey Maguire gets a lot of flack as an actor, and that's something that I kind of understand, but I kind of also don't understand the same way. Like I can kind of get because um, sometimes he goes a little too hard into roles. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I still think that he doesn't get some some credit. On, uh, on just, you know... I mean, he's not near as is. bad as Topher Grace was at Venom. Oh, my gosh. Which, <laughs> which was just terrible casting. And I think. honestly, I think so, I think Tobey Maguire's legacy gets uh, smeared by Spider-Man 3. Because it was yeah, just such a terrible absolutely. movie that people think about, of course, the scene where he's dancing and snapping his fingers and he's got the droopy hair and he's like, Oh, I'm very emo. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. It was so dumb. It was that, bad. The movie just fell apart. It collapsed on itself. Yeah. Um, you have to ignore the movie Spider-Man 3 and focus on the role that Tobey Maguire played. Yeah. Um, and that's where I think, yeah, Tobey Maguire was the better Peter Parker. How about yeah. who was the better Spider-Man? I really think, I agree with you on Peter Parker, but I really think Andrew Garfield did, was a better Spider-Man. Okay. I think he had to look better. I actually didn't hate the suit, and he had the quippy jokes 
That was yep. really central to Spider-Man. Yep. I felt like he did a good job. Plus, he just seemed like the right size for Spider-Man. I know that's kind of a weird um, but makes point sense. to make, but I, I really felt like when he was Spider-Man, he just nailed that. A lot better. I mean, his Peter Parker was not Peter Parker. Like, I don't know who that kid was, but it wasn't Peter. <laughs> uh, maybe a small case could be made that it was ultimate Peter Parker, but for the most part, not the Peter Parker that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, but he, he did a good job as Spider-Man, I feel like. I agree with that. Uh, what's the that chat saying? The chat is... Actually, I want to go ahead and say there was uh, one that I want to find here. It was Dan Williams brought it up. And this okay. is actually... I completely agree with Dan here. Toby was the best Parker. Holland was the best Spider. Yeah, and so far we were I agree. About, yeah, if we were talking about Tom Holland, I'd go with that because he he really had. I think where Tom Holland's strength is going to yeah. lie is um, he's he's got the ability to pull off the young Peter Parker as Spidey. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling he might lean a little bit too much. Not quite as much of a cool skateboarding dude as Andrew Garfield was, but I get the feeling he's going to be a little bit too like quick witted. Um, uh, as and, Peter Parker, and outspoken think? as Peter Parker, I'll be interested to see. I hope, yeah, I hope uh, they. Avoid I mean, that. he's got the potential, certainly, from what we've seen of him, to be the best both. Mm-hmm. Like he could be the best both, and I hope that he is. I loved him as Spider Man, and I tend to agree. Um, but we just we'll have to see how the movie plays out and and what they do. But yeah, I I really enjoyed uh, Toby's Peter and Garfield's Spider Man. So. Uh, that kind of wraps it up, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that wraps it up. We got um, some uh, some we'll, good yeah, we'll feedback get, here. We'll get on the chat in just a minute. There were a couple of honorable mentions out of these movies that we do need to talk about. Um, <laughs> I got to say one thing. Yeah, do it. Dan Williams said, mm-hmm. yeah, but Tyler is a Power Rangers fan, so he probably love that Green Goblin mask. You're right, Dan. I do love Power Rangers, and I do love that mask. I'm all about it, too. Um, hey, it was the early 2000s. It was, you know. It was, it was the best time to be alive. Um, in those movies, of course, we had the characters such as Lex Luthor, who got played by such prestigious actors as Gene Hackman, yes. Kevin Spacey, wow. and then Jesse Eisenberg. You had uh, the Joker, played yeah. by Jack Nicholson, <clears throat> Heath Ledger, Jared Leto. And, of course, the best Joker, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Yeah, That's exactly. Uh, but we're keeping with the movies. Yeah. So you have great performances from Nicholson and Ledger, and then you have Jared Leto. Um, Harvey Dent. Yeah. Tommy Lee Jones yeah. didn't really know what he was doing there. That's so that, true. Whatever. That's okay. Aaron Eckhart was perfect. He was great. Yeah. But the best Harvey Dent by far, in a way, was Billy D. Williams as yeah. Harvey Dent. Hands down. Doesn't get much better than yeah, that. Exactly. But yeah, looking at the chat, or some of the other comments that stand out to you here. Yeah. Um, I agree once again with first time watcher Jeff Smith. Jeff's on fire tonight. As Spider Man 2 was about perfect yeah. as far as movies go. Also, uh, Dan Williams brings up Best Aunt May. Marissa <laughs> Tomei, hands down. I don't care what anybody says about the age or the look, it's Marissa Tomei. It's always Marissa Tomei. Sure, sure. Um, Attack on Louis. I, you, please. Correct me on how to do the L U I. My bad. Like but right. Attack says that Holland seems like the kid in high school who would bully Peter Parker. That's what I'm a little bit nervous about. Okay. I'm worried he won't nail the Peter Parker role because of how good he is with the Spider Man role. Well, we'll just have to see. We'll that. give it a look. See, we don't know yet. We'll give it a look. See. Uh, Jeff Smith again said, "What would Spider Man Four have been like?" They actually almost had. Uh, they had that a lot of like. Pre-production stills. I was reading about this the other day. Uh-huh. Um, it would have involved uh, bumping. Um, uh, oh gosh, Sam Raimi's best friend Bruce. His Help best friend Bruce. Oh my god! What was he going to bump him to? Uh, a larger role, Bruce okay. Campbell. There, there we go, go, Bruce Campbell. It would have bumped him up to a larger role. I think oh, the role of uh, Mysterio would have been in there. Um, so. That Spider-Man Four would have had at least that, so we we may never know. We may the never world know. may never know. Well, that kind of wraps up this discussion. I, so. I appreciate the feedback. That was fun. That was a good discussion. That we may good. do another one of these on down the road, but do a TV version because there have just been so many TV actors. Yeah, or maybe we'll go and actually talk about um, Michael Keaton and how great of an actor he is and yeah, how I... he had a resurgence in his career <clears throat> recently by doing roles, okay. comedic roles like the other guys, and then winning awards like for Birdman. But no, you don't want to talk He's about okay. Michael Keaton. Oh my gosh. Hey, it's time for some giveaways. Time though. for the giveaway! We're going to go ahead and send that link out. Joseph's going to drop that in the chat. I All am. you have to do for this one, it's really easy. Just be subscribed to the YouTube channel. That's it. If you're subscribed, click on this link. It will ask you if you're subscribed. Click yes. It will verify that. And then you'll be good to go. And you can enter in 
Once again, for these two, the first arc, the first two trade paperbacks of The Uncanny Avengers by Rick Remender uh, and a Mystery Avengers action Ooh. figure, Mystery Avengers Marvel Legends coming your way. So Woo! go ahead and enter into that. So that's the giveaway we've got going right now, but it is time to go ahead and announce the winner of The Goon, the which Goon! is super exciting. I hope you guys are pumped. This has been weeks in the making. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is a great book. If you found our channel by tuning in to our videos with hardcover reviews, thank you for mm -hmm. joining us. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Make sure you're subscribed, of course. But it's time for the winner. The Tyler, winner why don't is... You do the honors? Jacob Roberts! Justin Rogers. No, that's yep. not even close. Jacob. Jacob Roberts. Mm. You are the winner, my mm. friend. So we'll be in contact and we'll get this book to you ASAP. -P. What's the second P stand for? Please. As soon as possible, please. It's polite. I don't think that works. It's courtesy. I don't think that works. Hey, because we had so many giveaways, we're going to yeah. go ahead and jump, skip a little, normally we have a little video segment. We have a little tiny segment, little but uh, not tonight. Not tonight. We're going to jump straight into our competition. That's it. All right. This is, uh, if you're a new viewer, this is what we do on all of our live shows. Mm -hmm. We have a competition. We have some sort of situation yep. where we have to produce, um, you know, rival answers to a question. Mm. And then we, we vote on, we discuss, we decide who wins. It's always me. It's not always him. However, right now, out of our five episodes, Tyler does have a 3-2 lead on me. What? This is because we have gone, Tyler won the first one, I won second. Yeah. Tyler won the third, I won the fourth. <laughs> Tyler won the fifth. This is the sixth episode. I'm definitely going to pull away in this episode. We're going we're gonna to see. We're going to have to see. So tonight we're doing another edition of C -C 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 Console, Console Wars. Wars. This is, of course, where we take iconic characters from particular video game consoles mm -hmm. and pit them against each other. Tonight, we're taking characters from the Sony PlayStation 1 and the greatest video game system of them all, the Nintendo 64. Second greatest. The greatest. Super Nintendo is the greatest. The Don't greatest. listen to him. But... It First of all, you tell us in the comments if you like what's, this. What's better, Super Nintendo or Nintendo 64? This is for... a. Uh, I'm going to do this, and I almost never do this. I'm going to give away... This is what it's come to. 800 SSD points. I'm looking at the producer. She is shaking her head. No, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I'm doing it. She's not happy There's no producer. This. Why did I say that? There's no producer. You almost, got, you almost tricked me. She's not happy about we're, it. We're giving away 800 SSD points <laughs> for the console so that Tyler, is winning, you, and it's Super Nintendo. You won... <laughs> You won the last competition, so by de facto, you go first. Okay, all right. That's a term I'm using incorrectly. <laughs> so tonight, I present with you, with you, to you, for you, for your viewing pleasure, my first character, the one, the iconic PlayStation 1 character. Okay. Potentially one of the most iconic characters around the world. Nice, all right. I like where you're going with this. Cloud Strife. Ha! <laughs> Man. Debuting in 1997, he was the main protagonist mm. of the game Final Fantasy VII. He is a genetically enhanced human. He well, has, spoiler alert. I, mean, I know, right? He is well above the normal human abilities. He can use magic and summon giant meteors. Also, he carries a buster sword that's as big as he is. Yep. He's a really strong character. I hope you got someone good because he is powerful. That is a very strong character. The only issue, of course, is that... You didn't even, you picked, you know, a character who's not even the coolest character in his own game. What? Whose character? Sephiroth. Sephiroth, really? Sephiroth by far Ooh, was the coolest the character. Oh, I got long and skinny. Yeah, and he also was a terrifying monster of pure destruction. He only had one wing. Come on. Come on, intimidating is one wing. This guy. All right. All right, yeah, that is a good one. I love Final Fantasy VII. It's dear to my heart. Just recently celebrated its 20th birthday, mm -hmm. so that's fantastic. A lot of people in here, by the way, are saying that. I know, I just saw that. I'm really upset. Now, the 64, the comp we were debating between which was better, 64 and Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. But I do agree with you all, 64. Yeah. So I'm going to go with maybe the most bad A dude on the Nintendo 64. The A stands console. for awesome, in case mm -hmm. you're wondering. He's bad awesome. That, of course, and it's not from an RPG, so it's okay. not a direct connection, but it's from one of the most iconic action games on the Nintendo 64. I'm going with 
Mr. Dash Rendar from Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Wow! Mm. What a good game. Anyone out there Shadows of the Empire fans? Anyone out there still own the book, the novel Shadows of the Empire? Because I do. I read that thing a lot. Don't know why. But anyway, Dash Rendar, of course, you load it up the game, and you're kind of like, who am I going to play as? Am I going to be Luke Skywalker? It's going to be great. And loads up, and it's like, oh, it's this (laughs) random guy. Who is this? And Why am it, I playing as, as him? As it turns out, yeah. And as it turns out, though, he's an awesome character. Bit oh, of, yeah. You can say a bit of a Han Solo ripoff, and that's fine. Homage. Homage, yes. Uh, but it was a really, really solid uh, storyline. It was a yep. great storyline outside of the big, th- like, that point in time, the th- the tri- trilogy, that's all we had. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great storyline <clears throat> out of that, and uh, Dash Rendar, for sure, is is who I have there. Um, Tyler Holland says he has the Dash Rendar action figure. I do wow, too. That's I got awesome. that one. I got uh, I got his ship. I still have it in my parents' attic. I might go over there tonight and get you it. Should prove you Sucks got out. it. So the thing about Shadows of the Empire that I remember is there was a sewer level, or you broke into like the sewer yeah. or somewhere, yep. and it was all like green murky water. And yep. There was a monster in there, and it scared the pee pee out of me every time I played. I was like, what's gonna happen? Yep, I didn't like it. So, okay, who do you think wins this fight? I gotta be honest, I, I kind of feel like it's Cloud. You know, I kind of want to go Cloud too, but I'm looking at the comments. What are the comments? Who ju- is- just about everyone's going Dash Rendar on this. Really? But Jonathan Busby's right, the correct answer is Marissa Tomei. <laughs> yeah, the correct answer is always Mr. Tomei. Thanks for remembering that, John. Um, yeah, I gotta be honest, I think it's Cloud. I really do think it's Cloud. He's got the strength and the skills, he's got Omni Slash, mm-hmm. he can summon Meteor, he's got Genova Self, he's a Genova's witness for Pete's sake. <laughs> he's got all of the skills required. I'm gonna go full on with Dash Rendar just because you made a Genova's witness pun. Really? Yeah, <laughs> really? exactly. And I'm looking at the people here, and the people are kind of going with Dash Rendar. I see a cloud. There's one cloud, yes. And Ricky, I love you. I love you for that. Because I do love cloud a lot. This is hard. I can't really, really pick one really? of these. Okay. So I'm going to defer entirely. Let us know entirely. in the comments. Yeah. I'm going to defer entirely there. or Dash. Because I can't pick. Go ahead and say in the comments right now, cloud or Dash, and we're going to move on. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Yep. And we'll right. see. Okay, the so next character. The next get character to I get to pick. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to go with another. Um, this one was difficult. Because I had a lot of solid options that were Nintendo 64 specific. Um, I'm going to go with... Completely mix it up. And go with... I'm just kidding, it's not. Another action hero, Joanna Dark from Perfect Dark. Ooh, what a game. Perfect Dark, I think, is one of the most underrated Nintendo 64 games out Uh, there. Everyone likes it. (laughs) Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's underrated because everyone likes it. Perfect Dark is, I think, one of the most properly rated Nintendo 64 <laughs> games out there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm Joanna Dark, Perfect Dark. She was a British super agent in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, Perfect mm-hmm. Dark was a bit of a follow-up, if you will, to GoldenEye on mm. Nintendo 64. It was a very powerful game. So the major problem with Perfect Dark as a game is that it kind of lagged a little bit, yeah. which is not something you normally experience on console it's or really in cartridge not. games. Kind of weird that they would do that. Mm-hmm. But it was a little too powerful. But Joanna Dark, awesome secret agent in the future, has future tech. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go Joanna Dark here. That's a good choice. That's a really good choice. I'm going to counter that choice with a similar character. And uh, he was introduced in a PlayStation uh, era game. Actually, he wasn't... I don't know if he was technically introduced in a PlayStation era game, but it's a PlayStation exclusive. Okay. Uh, And I'm going to read you a quote, and I want to see if you can guess it. Okay. We can tell other people about having faith, what we had faith in, what we found important enough to fight for. It's not whether you were right or wrong, or how much faith you were willing to have. It's just your faith that decides the future. Uh, that would be Dash Rendar? No. <laughs> oh, my bad. It's Solid Snake. Solid Snake, yep. Solid Snake. Yep. He's a mercenary who Love possesses it. the IQ of 180. He, is, he knows six languages, so he can shout obscenities at you mm-hmm. all different kinds of ways. He's known as a man who makes the impossible possible. He's actually a clone. Uh, he's a clone and a renowned soldier in the special unit Foxhound. Yep. But I think his most important trait, the thing he's best at, is hiding in boxes. I mean, you put a box around this guy, boom, he disappears. He's like invisible. Yep. Good luck finding him if there's a box in your area. Joanna Dark could find him with the far sight rifle. 
David wow. Cobb pointed that one out. Wow. Yep. Oh, that's really good. Um, that's really, really good. Looking back, it kind of looks like Cloud. I don't know. I'm really, I'm feeling Cloud, but I, it might be split between Cloud and Dash. It's really not. There were a lot more people that said Dash Rendar. Were there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I stand corrected. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but I, Marissa Tomei. Yeah, this is a tough one. Both very similar characters, you're yeah. right. Um, prefer, you know, they work off of stealth and everything. Obviously, there's a lot of Joanna Dark's um, future tech and alien yeah. tech that helps out. The far sight rifle was awesome. I think it probably goes to Joanna Dark. You know, I'm I'm torn here. Um, I really am. I'm I'm actually going to go the other way. I think it goes with Solid well, Snake. So let us know in the chat what you tell think. us what you think. I think Solid Snake would win this. I think Solid Snake, all in all, is just a better character well, that than may Joanna be. Dark. And I even picked Joanna Dark, and I love that game. But that Solid Snake, you put out the big guns there. That, that was a be. good call. Um, oh no, the big guns haven't come out, my friend. I'm about to display the big guns right now. Okay, well, you did pull out the big guns there. Before we go any further, David Codd did say Cloud is a stronger individual, but could he survive going into space? In Final Fantasy VII, he did go into space That's briefly. True. There was a spaceship scene. You go up there. It was a terrible spaceship. It would not have survived in a gunfight <laughs> against true. Dash Rendar. So That's true. He would have for a little bit, and then he would have died. Mm, so, true. All right, tell us who you think, if you've got Joanna The strongest Dark, and best pick say. coming up, though. Prepare okay. yourself. All right, I'm ready. For the PlayStation man himself, Spyro the Dragon. That's good. Spyro the Dragon debuted good. in 1998 in his own self-titled game. And let me just tell you a little bit about the abilities... That Spyro, because you may be thinking Spyro, he's a cute little dragon, what can he do? Well, he's a master of all four elements. He can breathe all four elements at will. Also, he has Blight, a wing shield that can deflect almost anything, a head bash, a unique style of our martial arts named Dragon Kata, and the ability to slow time. Which is pretty good, I guess. If you're into fighting. If you're into that. Wow. wow. Um, yeah, Spyro the Dragon. I mean, Spyro's That's good. good. And I actually didn't remember that he had all his abilities, and I was looking him up for this, and I was like, he could slow down time? Yeah. He, he was a master of all the elements? Spyro. And Dragon Kata? A little bit powerful. He's, he's OP. They needed to nerf Spyro, they did, I think. Which is why he was never popular again. <laughs> all right. Going with a bit of a uh, cartoony yeah. Yeah. character. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to answer in kind... With Conquer the Squirrel from Conquer's Bad what? Fur Day. <laughs> That's a bad man, my jammer. <laughs> You're going to love, love that competition. And I really got to say that it might go towards Conquer because obviously he, uh, he has complete disdain for others. Yeah. Um, he lives by the code of just get money. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> he uh, has no inhibitions at all, considering yeah. the game starts with him, you know, horrendously inebriated or hungover, whatever, yeah. maybe. And late in the game, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if anyone here has played uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, you know the ending there. He actually wins the final boss fight by breaking the fourth wall and appealing to programmers <laughs> to program in a katana for him to kill the main boss with. Um, so, okay. So Conquer <laughs> has the ability. Spyro may have all those abilities. Conquer has the ability to appeal to programmers. <laughs> okay. So And he wasn't even all that upset when his girlfriend got gunned down right in front of him. Which so, is so weird. What a terrible game. In a fair fight, in a fight that's just skill, Conqueror and Spyro in like just skill. A room, I think Spyro wins. But when you're talking about a real world scenario, and he may not even win in a room if he can talk to the developers of life and say, give me extra weapons to be Exactly. Person. That's important. But in a real world scenario, I feel like Conquer has no problem grabbing an innocent bystander and putting them in harm's way. Whereas Spyro would be like, no, let me save this person. It's a tough one. Conquer would be like, oh, we'll, I'll kill this person to win this fight. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't got a problem yeah. doing that. Like, no, no issues here. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. Looking back at the chat here, first of all, I want to give a shout out to my friend Jay Lewis. Oh, Jay, up, appreciate Jay? you joining us, man. Looks like Snake did win that last fight. I'm just mm -hmm. off my game wholeheartedly tonight. Yeah, all of my thoughts are wrong. It, for me, it Cloud looks, is win, yeah. lose it. Cloud lost Dash and Snake. And now, what do you guys think in the chat? Yeah, it looks like it looks like we're going Dash, going Snake. So the tiebreaker here is, yep. um, of course. Uh, Spyro the Dragon and Conquer the Squirrel. Yeah. So and, and by Jeff Smith. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining, Jeff. 
All right, we do have a little video to show now, yeah. and during the course of this video, we want you to comment and tell us yep. who you think would win between Spyro and Conquer. As well, don't forget, if you haven't signed up for the giveaway yet... Go ahead and hit that. We're going to put that link back out there. That's right. Enjoy this little video. We'll come back in about seven minutes. That's all <laughs> yeah. the videos. Um, and uh, we'll announce a winner yep. of both our competition and a winner of these lovely books, along with a mystery Avengers figure. We'll see you again in just a few minutes. We've got to talk about Squirrel Girl again. It's one of our favorites here on the channel. And you might be thinking, Joseph, you're not the comics guy. That's Tyler's job. You're just the devilishly handsome face that we fantasize about a lot. And I get it, and I understand. But i got to talk about Squirrel Girl because I love Squirrel Girl. And I love Squirrel Girl because I love Hamlet. Well, okay, that's kind of, that's kind of right. It's kind of mostly accurate. If you're unfamiliar, Squirrel Girl was created in 1991 by Will Murray and Steve Ditko. They wanted to create a character that was really lighthearted and kind of a response to a lot of the really dark and brooding characters that had been created and were very popular in the 80s and 90s. In her first appearance, she met, annoyed, then befriended Iron Man and helped him defeat Doctor Doom. After that, she appeared once or twice throughout the 90s and disappeared for almost a full decade being mentioned in a Deadpool comic once and eventually becoming Deadpool's friend when she was brought back in some recent comics. Her main thing is that she serves as the nanny for Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. But this video isn't really about Squirrel Girl. If you want to see more of that, check the description of this video. There's a link there sends you back to a video that Tyler made about the current run of the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. See, she finally has her own standalone comic. And this is why I'm a big fan of the comic. It's because I'm a big fan of the comics writer, Ryan North. Now who is Ryan North, you might ask? I'm glad you did, because that's the purpose of this video. It's why I made that's why I made the video. Ryan North is a computer programmer from Ontario, Canada. Yes, that's right, computer programmer. On February 1st, 2003, Ryan North decided to launch a webcomic, despite not being an artist himself. What Ryan North is, if not an artist, is a genius. He created Dinosaur Comics, a six-panel, never-changing comic that features the adventures of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a Utah Raptor, and a drum semina, drum, drumina, drama, drama semia, um, 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 drum, drama, drum, 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 and a third dinosaur. The panels never change. Only the dialogue moves around, and this is so remarkable considering for years and years and years, North updated it every weekday with a brand new comic. And the topics of the comics ranged from the absurd to the very scientific to, well, comics themselves. Being a comic fan, North had no choice but to include the things he was interested in. In fact, Dinosaur Comics still runs now on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, and you can find it at quants.com. Q-W-A-N-T-Z. That's right, this is a webcomic that has gone on for 14 years. Even as North has moved on to other stages of life, he's gotten married, he started writing comics for Marvel, he got stuck in an empty skate park. You should probably Google that. He got stuck in a hole in a skate park and tweeted about it. In 2012, North signed on to be the writer for the Adventure Time comic book series. Pretty big because Adventure Time was growing in popularity more and more and you can say it went pretty well because the very next year, 2013, one year into North's comic book writing career, Adventure Time won an Eisner Award for Best Child's Publication. Not bad for a computer programmer who once got stuck in a hole in a skate park. After a few years behind the helm of Adventure Time, North signed on to be the author of The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. And it could not have been a more perfect fit because North's unique writing style fits so perfectly with the brevity and lightness of the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, the character herself, who of course is a nanny, is a college student, who is of course studying computer programming. But how did he reach that point in his career if he was just doing a dinosaur comic? Which by the way is one of the most brilliant things you'll ever read in your entire life. I want to emphasize that again. Well, it's really because his writing prowess became more well known through the publication of two books. The first of which being The Machine of Death. This was a collection of short stories that North helped 
edit and assemble and put together along with contributing to. It's set in some sort of future setting where there's a machine that will tell you how you died, but it does it in very vague sort of ways. But even more notably than that, in 2012, North launched a Kickstarter campaign for something called To Be or Not To Be, That Is The Adventure. To Be or Not To Be, That Is The Adventure is a choose your own adventure retelling of Hamlet by William Shakespeare. If that idea isn't enough to convince you to go ahead and read Squirrel Girl or to pick up all of Ryan North's previous work, I don't know what will. He took a hundreds of years old, is that how you say it? Hundreds of years old? Is that right? Okay. He took a hundreds of years old story and completely retold it, making it so ridiculous. You can choose to play a written out game as Hamlet. You can choose to hunt down Hamlet's entire family if you want to. And it's not small either. He went through, I mean this is detailed. There are all these illustrations throughout the entire book of all the different endings you can get. Can you still see it? I hope you can. Bookmarks fell out of it. There's so much going on here. I'm such a fan. I have the hardcover copy. What you gotta say about that? The original goal on Kickstarter was to raise $20,000. Within the first week, they had gotten six times more than that. By the time it was done, it had earned over $580,000, a Kickstarter record for a publishing project. Ryan North is a name that you should know. If you're unfamiliar, I highly recommend everything he's done so far. In fact, just this past year, he put out Romeo and or Juliet. You guessed it, another choose-your-own-adventure style retelling of William Shakespeare. So if you're interested in reading the work of an Eisner-winning comic book writer who's only been in the comic book game for a few years, you need to check out Ryan North's Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. And I love North because when I was in high school in the early 2000s, I'd sit around and I'd read dinosaur comics and I'd think to myself, hey, this is a guy who's just going out there and creating stuff on the internet because he can. Why couldn't I do that too? So he's been an inspiration to me in a lot of ways. And for that alone, I mean, he'll always have my support. But what do I know? I'm just a handsome face. Is that doing it for you? <laughs> There's a wink. Woohoo! Yippee! Yeah? Yeah. There we go. That was mm. great. Mm. Loved that. So, uh, yeah, so obviously I have a, a, a big love for Ryan North and his writing and his writing styles. He also, one thing that didn't make the cut in the video that I do want to plug is a few years back he created a, he created a site, I believe, called um, Every Topic of Universe Except for Chickens. And it was a Wikipedia alternative because there's so much vandalism of Wikipedia articles uh -huh. in which uh, every article was accurate. And you were not allowed to vandalize any article, but you could freely, to get get it out of your system, vandalize the article about chickens. Fantastic. Because, because dudes already know about chickens. Yeah, everyone knows so, about chickens. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Uh, I also wanted to say, while we were at that break, while we were watching that segment, some breaking news about Iron Fist Season 2 came out. And apparently there is going to be a fight between Shaolo the Dragon and Spyro. Yep. And Iron Fist is actually not going to be the immortal weapon for Kun Lun. He's going to be the immortal weapon for Spyro the Dragon. So it should be an interesting season. I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, All right, man. we got a winner. We do have a we winner. We have a winner. We do have a winner. I would like to say thanks to everybody for showing up tonight. Thanks for entering. We do these weekly. There's going to be another giveaway this week. There will be another giveaway. You want We're to tell about that? I would love to. Yeah, we love... We love doing these live shows, yeah. and I do want to say once again, it's great to be back, So, and thank you for joining us on this. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway later in the week. We've got a couple of videos. Yep. Um, we're going to be putting out, uh, we've been doing a running video series critiquing and recapping Legion, the show. Such you're, a good show. If you're not watching it, you ought mm -hmm. to be. Episode 5, I still can't mm -hmm. get over how great mm -hmm. episode 5 was. Um, so, so that's going to be coming out along with another one of my vintage video game review videos yeah. that I'm excited to share with you guys. That's going to be great. And we're going to get possibly a story time from me about mm. collecting. <laughs> And, Gather around, children. And if you happen to catch our Squirrel Girl number one, because we do love Squirrel Girl uh, narration, you can check that out of the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one. We're going to be doing another one of those on Deadpool. And then finally, we might be joined and graced yet again with Jenny 
to review the popular movie dropping this week, Power Rangers. Mm-mm-mm. It's going to be a good time. I can't wait to see the movie, and I'm a time. huge lifelong Power Ranger fan. Got a lot to say about it. Jenny doesn't know anything about Power Rangers, so <laughs> it should be a great time. Um, and be sure you tune into those videos because, like we said, we are going to be giving away details in the videos That's on how right. you can enter to win a gift card. hey So if you want to win a gift card in Stock Trades or your choice of locale, international or domestic, yep. check out those videos. So tonight's yep. winner is the <sighs> illustrious, the <sighs> famous, <sighs> the magical Ricky Carter. Ricky. Congratulations, Ricky. You got it, buddy. You got these books. You got a special Avengers action figure coming your way. Oh, man. What a great... Great night this has been. It really was a great night. Thank you guys for joining us again. We're going to get back in the swing of things. We'll be back next Tuesday. Same SSD time. That's where you say same SSD channel. Why would I say that? Same SSD time. But you didn't answer my question. If you're Why not even going to take that? this seriously. I don't understand. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we do, of course, want to, you know, once again say, go out, do something nice for the people um, in your life. Go buy a friend lunch, for example. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like me. a pretty good thing Come to do. visit me. Buy me lunch. You don't have friends. That's true. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, special thanks to our guest, uh, Bollywood legend, Amita Bashan. Uh, follow us on, be sure to look, at, look up our Facebook page, Super yeah. Squad D. We're on there. And uh, thank you for joining us. We're over time, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Once again... That's Tyler. That's Wade Wilson. And this has been Super Super Squad Squad D. D. Where the D stands for Deluge. 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 See you next time. It's one of them uh, fancy terms. Hey, play the outro music. Uh, We don't. Producer, once again, let us know. No outro music. She's kind of angry. There's no producer.